Hi everyone, this is Jackie Cooper with J. Cooper Travels and I want to welcome everyone to this episode. I'm very excited to have my special guest on today. I'll be uh, chatting with her in a quick second. For those that are new to J. Cooper Travels, I just want to welcome you and also share a little bit more about my background and how the, um, the show got started. A, a number of years ago, um, I was asked by a friend, why are you traveling retail when you can travel wholesale? So I became a certified travel consultant because every year I took trips with my daughter and I love exploring the world. And so J. Cooper Travel started because of my journeys around the globe. But then as everyone you know remembers, COVID happened. So J. Cooper Travel sort of was... Um, uh, rebranded for another, for lack of a better word. Um, and it's more about our journey. How do we travel in life? How do we travel inside as well as, you know, outside, both with our friends, family, um, and ourselves. And, um, you know, that's, I think one of the lessons that COVID has shared is, um, how are we treating ourselves? How are we treating others? And that pause of time when we were sort of forced to have a staycation, I think was a good thing in many ways because it allowed us to reflect. So um, just, you know, another quick um, mention about my background. I'm a lawyer, but I'm also a special education teacher and I'm also a mom, a single mom. So, you know, all those things have um, helped me in my own personal journey, you know, thinking about where do I wanna go? What do I wanna do? And how do I wanna help people? And my guest today is very similar. She is helping others in many ways. And we're gonna be talking about a book that she's created and um, more about how she's reaching out to um, have everyone in their own personal self-discovery path. So uh, welcome today. How are you doing? Thank you, I'm doing very well. Thank you, Jacqueline. It's lovely. Yeah. So I'm going to um, let you introduce yourself and also what you're doing. And for those, you know, who are listening on the talk show side, you know, definitely hop over to the Zoom side because we're going to be showing some books and some images that are just magical. And um, you really want to enjoy the visual, um, the peace and the, um, the tranquility that you get when you look at the pictures. So definitely hop over there. And I just also wanna mention before, um, you know, we continue our conversations, if you don't have paper and pen, don't worry. All the links will be in the blog below. So that way you can just come back to this episode and, um, and reach out and make contact. So go ahead and share more about what you're doing. Well, I am like you wear many hats. I am a psychotherapist of many decades. I am an author uh, and two of the books we're gonna talk about today, they are um, companions, they belong together. I'm also an artist, a painter, and it is my work that's featured in the uh, one of the books, the, the workbook that goes with the novel. Um, I also coach and teach and I teach art and for, for many years I taught at university. So there's this sort of confluence of these different things. They're different, but they, they flow and blend together and I think are a deep part of my heart and my life in terms of how I support people and open them to their own life force, their own creative spark and pathways to help them discover their own wholeness. And so, um, how did you, sorry to interrupt, how did you end up um, starting your journey and, and what made you decide to um, go down that path to help people? Oh. Well, I think it all began as many things do in my childhood, like many psychotherapists. I had a, uh, a childhood that sort of predisposes a person to particularly have deep compassion to sort things out and want to make the world a better place. So from that sort of fiery beginning uh, with my little um, empath heart, I became a seeker. I discovered I was a seeker. You know, we hear that term, a spiritual seeker. And so I began my journey and I had some major health challenges as well. And I wanted to know why, what is the cause? What is the cause of, of illness? What is the cause of suffering? And how do we become well? How do, how do we, what's the pathway? I believe there was a pathway. So that led me 
from art school to get my master's in, in clinical psychology and a doctorate in human behavior and uh, go on and do all these things I shared. And sort of beneath kind of the, the flow beneath all those things was this steady focus on this bigger idea about how to help people. So as I went on my journey and I gathered together these skills and gained experience, it started to coalesce into an idea for a book. And that in time evolved into the idea of a novel because I love storytelling. I believe that's a, it's a great tradition of literature and life and myth to teach through story and as a human beings, it's how we experience life. So I wrote the novel to offer people this notion of a pathway, a way that they could find their path through the world. And even as a, as a psychotherapist, it, it, it's about what happens out in between, it's in the world, it, it's in your life. And so my, the, the, the heroine of my novel is named Helen and she is a traveler. She's a seeker, she goes on an epic adventure, it's on foot and she traverses a magical land called the land behind the doors. And we have the book up actually, mm -hmm. it's called The Seven Doors of the Fire Maker. Um, and I see that's your art on the cover? Yes, it is. Uh, that is an image that my publisher selected for the cover art. And um, I feel like it's very suited to the story as, as you get to learn it. And it's also visually very striking, I think. So, so tell us more about the seven doors. What are they all about? Each door is its own world, its own landscape. They all live in this place called the land behind the doors. And each one opens into a different situation, a different circumstance. So as she's ready, Helen opens the door. So for example, the first door, she finds herself um, in a field where she sees this, which she discovers is a giant amusement park in the distance. And she goes there and she has this experience where she encounters the big deal wheel, which is really the wheel of life. And she, she sees people spinning for different outcomes and she observes and she starts to make some connections about the nature of desire, what I call generalized longing, and how people seem to be never satisfied and they just kept going and going. And at one point she just has it and she walks away. And that's really how she is initiated in her journey is that first experience. And then more is revealed later on is, is the lesson of each door seems to kind of weave its way as she goes along. So each door, there's a one door where she, that's the, um, the uh, sixth door where she goes sailing. She finds a little boat and she goes sailing to a place called Star Island. There is another door that takes her, it's the fourth door that takes her into the diner where she meets a waitress named Sugar, who is basically an expert on love and relationships and gives her some new ways of understanding romantic love. And um, there's the third door, which we have a little, um, image of the, there's um in the, there's the door and then before helen opens the door there are these little tiles and they're made by children and you see it's called the beehive so the beehive i know i'm out of order here no it's okay and this is okay. the beehive right here yeah the beehive is about relate family relationships dynamics places that we we come from and we go back to that love us and also hurt us and, and to understand what that's about and what, where she needs to go with that. And as she's there on this path, as she opens the door, she, she walks in this path and, path and after a while, she hears this droning and we come to find that it's the, um, the sound of uh, bees in a beehive. And she, she knows better than to go that way. And she observes some women rushing in and she tries to warn them and they don't heed her. And so there's a lot of learning that comes from that. So there, the great adventure is great. It's humor. There's 
deep, poignant, lyrical passages and these wonderful lessons of insight and wisdom that are universally applicable. As a, as a therapist, a lot of what my time was spent is coming to understand what are these core experiences that we go through as human beings? You know, what are these universal dynamics? So each store covers these. And you will find, as with many things, you will find what you need. What you find will be what you're looking for. And Helen, um, on the other side of the journey, she has an experience that is integrates the totality. But one thing I want to let your listeners know is it's not necessary to go through all of the doors to take away something of great value. Each one is its own universe of experience, of lesson, and opportunity. And together, collectively, they can change your life. So I, I have the picture up here now of the companion book along with the original book. So how do these books interrelate? And um, what do you, when people visit you or talk to you on Zoom or whatever, um, how do you use these books within your, um, your supporting other people? Yes, well, the Seven Doors of the Firemaker, a personal planetary adventure, which we first introduced, is a novel. And the notebook is, is, is a workbook, if you will. I called it a notebook because as a, as a painter, I keep lots of notebooks and they have drawings and scribbles and notes and things and they're not particularly linear. And that inspired me of how I wanted this to be something when you open it up, that images pop up. It's almost like butterflies come out. It has this movement. And so the idea is that after a reader has finished the book, they want to go on the journey themselves. They want that next step. So it was actually my publisher's idea and I thought it was, it was great to have that next step for them. And I take them by the hand, it's, it's nonfiction, I speak to them directly and walk them through the journey. And there's a little um, summary of each door and there's lots of exercises and there's art, some of which we're seeing and all kinds of extra information. And so there's this rhythm that we move through and it is meant to, to deepen and expand the wisdom of the doors in personal terms. So um, how do people reach out to you? How do they contact you? They can contact me I, on my website is one way. It is marinawalkerrose.com and the, also via email mwr at marinawalkerrose.com and they also can um i'm thinking about yeah i can give my number is 805-698-0629 that's my work number they can reach me that way so they can check me out on my website they can call me and they can email me um I also have uh, some social media accounts and I think I can give all that to you. And we yeah, can... all those will be embedded below. So that <laughs> way when um, they wanna reach out to you, they can connect on those various areas. So um, I know we're gonna be talking a little bit more um, as we keep um, talking on the show, um, but right now I think let's think about the one tip, one place that I always do on the Jay Cooper travels. One tip might be uh, something that you would like everyone to be thinking about. And the place is something that a place that you would think that they should discover and explore. So which one would you like to talk about first? I'll talk about the tip. Okay, great. So what tip would you like everyone to kind of think? My tip is the fundamental thing I want everyone to know is that you are already whole. Mm -hmm. Things have happened that make you feel broken, but you are not broken. And to take that in is a truth that you can count on and stand on and build your life on and connect with that. And that will connect you with yourself and with source and vivify you as you go along. And I believe this with all my heart. And that's my one sort of medical core belief. Yeah. That's a great, a great tip to, for everyone to remember, you know, again, a lot of times we go through life and we, um, 
we think about the external and we forget about our internal. And I think it's very important to remember that, like you said, we are, we are complete, we are whole and, um, and everything is good. And what is the, um, and I know that the books that you're sharing also help kind of rebalance and ground because sometimes you need that as you're kind of walking through life. Um, Very much so. They connect the human with the spiritual in a grounded way because both are so important and it's how we bridge those and find our way with that. And my books open that pathway and ground it in, in real terms. Yeah. So uh, what about the place of, because one of the things that I love about traveling is to be able to discover new places, meet new people, uh, and just kind of, um, it's very refreshing. It's healing to kind of explore. Sometimes we have to explore in our own background, back backyard rather which is still um wonderful to do but it's also nice to explore new places um so where would you suggest that people kind of um step out and look at well i there's a place in santa barbara that is called la super rica ah. and it was one of julia child's favorite restaurants it's it's a little place on um I think it's uh, um, Milpa Street in Santa Barbara. It's a it's a um, kind of a low profile place, outdoor seating, and it's authentic Mexican cuisine. Their specialty is handmade tortillas, corn tortillas, fish tacos, and they make them right there. You can watch them. They've been there forever, and it's beloved. And so you have to go looking for it, but it is. It's a one, it's a treasure. So that's that. nice. And there's also in Santa Barbara, a place called Arroyo Boro Beach, which is this little jewel of a beach that you have to kind of find the entrance to. Lots of locals know to go there. Probably non-locals now too, but that's a very special place. And then I want to add a couple places in San Diego. Really, it, and it's, it's a tourist place you know, attraction in a way, Balboa Park, but for those of people, those of us that live here, I'm currently in San Diego, there are just so many special places, and so what I want to share with your listeners today is there's a place called um, the Prado Restaurant, and they have a, a sunken garden patio in the back that's magical with fairy lights and, and But the best part of that is just beyond that, there's some nooks and pathways that few people take that lead to different places in the heart of the garden. So if, you're, if you go there and you're quiet and just soak that in and call forth your adventure self, you can have some wonderful little off the beaten track adventures and discover the most beautiful flowers and birds and um, views. So that sounds magical. It sounds really nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So for everyone who's listening, I just want to also mention that, um, you know, if you are deciding to travel, one of the areas that I also can help you on is uh, looking at travel insurance. Uh, Because again, um, unexpected things do happen. And at least having the insurance will mean that you can have a return on the investment for your vacation, your travel. And also um, with the unexpected um, things that go on with COVID, a lot of times now that with the health, the the travel insurance, it provides you with the, um, the peace of mind to know that you actually can, if you have to be quarantined, your hotel's covered and other expenses that are covered. So one of the things, you know, you can definitely reach out to me about is any travel related questions. I'm happy to share with you um, the the changes that are going on within the entire globe. I have different social media so you can keep up with things. Um, the world is definitely opening up and it's, it's wonderful to be able to explore again. But, um, you know, if you have any questions, just reach out to me on that. So any last minute thoughts that you have on, um, you know, our conversation about the books or who you're helping and um, projects that you have, you know, in the near future, anything you want to share? Yes, I wanted to say that I, I wrote these books to help people and to offer them 
this pathway. And that can be done on their own through acquiring the books, reading them. But I also work with people using these books as a way for them with my support if they, if they desire that to go on these journeys. And I wanna encourage people to embrace that seeker part of them and the adventure of self-discovery and this notion that your path is a living thing, meaning things are not set in stone. It's, it's luminous and alive and available to you and to really take in the energy and excitement of that. And things can get better very quickly, even as we're working on deep old problems. And as far as projects, I have a lot of different things in the works. I have some things involving my art. I'm putting together an online art salon that will be a gathering place for people to come and share what they're doing and we'll have experiences. Um, I actually working currently on, on another book that is related to this. And I have some special programs in the work that are grounded within the Firemaker work that have to do with a, um, a garden and, a bit, and kind of deeper dives into the nature of what happens in the garden in, in a sort of spiritual psychology way that is very practical as well. So there's some, some wonderful stuff coming up. That sounds really great. So for everyone who's listening, you know, we're always personally exploring, you know, again, that's part of our growth. That's, you know, every phase of our life, you know, we reflect on our life differently. You know, when I was younger, I thought about things differently than I do now. And so, you know, it's, it is important to kind of think about what books are we reading? You know, how do we feed our mind? You know, because our mind is definitely like a garden and everything that we plant in our mind there's a harvest. So obviously a more positive seed is better than not. <laughs> so again, um, you know, I would definitely reach out and take a look at the books because they might provide some guidance or insight that you might not have thought about. And, um, or there might be someone in your life that needs them as well. So again, you know, whenever we are thinking about things, um, they come into our life for a reason, even though we might not always be aware of the reason why, and it might not be for us, it might be for someone else that we are connecting with. So with that, I want to thank you for being on. It's been a pleasure. Mm -hmm. And remember everyone, um, as I've said before, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. We're all interconnected. We're all one world and have a great day. Thank you so much for being on. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Have a great one, everyone. Bye. Thank you.